Hi, it's Peter Nixon in my studio here in Hong Kong, but I have on my virtual background behind me the beautiful Petronas Towers because this message is being recorded for the alumni and friends and frontline workers in Malaysia from the Razak School of Government and uh, all the great things that we've done together there. I'm thinking of all of you. Uh, Joe has kindly asked me to think about three questions and to record my answers in writing. And I thought, well, why not also record them on video and give you a chance to uh, see a little bit of uh, my thinking in this regard. I, I'm wearing uh, my McGill University t-shirt because my family has been attached to McGill Medicine for uh, many generations. And uh, in this pandemic, I'm especially thinking about all of the frontline workers in Malaysia, in Canada, in Hong Kong, everywhere around the world, who are putting their lives at risk in order to save the lives of all of our uh, brethren. So the questions that Joe has put to me relate to leadership. Uh, first, he's asked me about the effects of this coronavirus on my daily life. Second, he's asked me uh, perhaps to identify what I would now consider the top three leadership lessons. And third, any messages that I may have for you, actual alumni uh, that we've worked with together or frontline workers in COVID-19. So how has it affected me? Well, uh, I'm a trainer, I'm a speaker, I'm a group facilitator, and when this happened, all of my work came to a crashing halt. So I have no work, uh, my gym is closed, and after th oh, 30 years of traveling uh, every month somewhere in the world, I haven't traveled now for a few months. So it's probably, uh, in that regard, one of the biggest changes in my life. Fortunately, my family are all well, my uh, friends are all well. Uh, I watch the news daily like all of you, and uh, pray that we will uh, not be touched directly by this. But even if we're not touched directly by this, we want to reach out and pray for all of those who are touched by this terrible disease. The second way it's affected my daily life is uh, I've had to uh, figure out how to move all of my services online. And I'm doing that uh, as we speak. This is an example speaking online, speaking to groups online, uh, doing training online that will be coming up. The Potential Dialogue Institute online will be happening and I'll be sharing that with the Razak School of Government. The third way that it's affected my daily life is that uh, I've been busy uh, helping stressed out clients and family members through this crisis. And uh, I've been able to keep my head while all boats were losing theirs and blaming it on you. Uh, when I was young, some of you would remember the story some 40 years ago. Uh, my father sent me a note and I put it up on the wall in my dormitory at college. And it said, learn to control your emotions to enhance your situation rather than hinder it. Learn to control your emotions to enhance your situation rather than hinder it. And, uh, you know, as a young 17-year-old male uh, at the time, that seemed to make a lot of sense. And I had absolutely no idea how to do that. And for the next 40 years, I tried to figure out how to do that. And now we're faced with uh, the worst pandemic in human history. And uh, managing your emotions to enhance your situation rather than hinder it are suddenly uh, some of the most important skills that you could ever pick up as a leader. So I'm fortunate that my father asked me to figure out how to do that because it took me 40 years. I'm a slow learner, but I have uh, figured out a few things and I'll share. In terms of the top three leadership lessons that we've learned from this pandemic, I think one is uh, we're a global village and when somebody is sick somewhere, everyone is sick everywhere. And if it wasn't obvious before, it's dreadfully obvious now. So we really have to look after each other everywhere in the world. It doesn't matter if you're Malaysian or Canadian or Chinese 
we're all in this together and we all have to look after each other. So the historical competitiveness between nations, hopefully in the post pandemic world will be something of the past. We also know that one of the great leadership lessons in this pandemic is that real leaders stand tall and uh, false leaders tend to fall over in the storm. And you only have to look around and you see the real leaders that are standing up and uh, sustaining their positions in the height of the storm. And this is a long storm. And uh, these are leaders that have their eyes set on the horizon. They're constantly showing compassion for the tragic uh, realities around them. But through their own uh, skills to manage their emotions, to enhance their situation rather than hinder it, they're able to deal with the ambiguity of the change, the constant change, and they're able to work with other people even if they disagree with them in order to uh, help get the followers that are with them, beside them, behind them, and some even in front of them in order to get them to a safer place. A third leadership lesson from this pandemic is that uh, everybody wears down. We all wear down. It's wearing us down physically, it's wearing us down mentally, and it's wearing us down spiritually. And great leaders have a way of uh, daily replenishing their strength, their spiritual, mental, and physical strength. So what does it you do? Uh, I can tell you what I do. I, I uh, go for walks, I listen to music, I read books, I take time out, uh, I, I do uh, hiking uh, in my small studio, I, uh, even at the office I have a yoga mat, I have to stretch, I should do more abs, but uh, the aerobic part is, is working quite well. So physically, uh, spiritually, and mentally. You know, you have to, I probably have learned more in the last two months than I have in years, just trying to figure out how all the software works, how all the uh, reaching out to clients online around the world will, will work out. And so you have to do that. And good leaders do that. So you need to do that as well. The third area are any specific messages for you as alumni and for the frontline workers in Malaysia. I. I have a niece on the front line. She's a nurse at the uh, one of the hospitals in Montreal, which is the epicenter in Canada. And uh, she sent pictures, you know, with the, the straps on her face and the marks from her hazmat full protective gear. Uh, so it, it hits home, her and uh, also a, a, a neighbor who's working in one of the uh, COVID centers in London, England, same thing, fully covered uh, heroes, right? Wonderful, wonderful heroes. So what do we need to do? We need to manage our stress so as not to stress the people around us. Uh, we need to recognize that everybody's gonna hit the wall. If they haven't already, they're gonna uh, break down mentally, physically and spiritually at different times and it's normal and none of us are immune. So as a first step, we always should have compassion for others. And uh, you only have to watch the news to see which leaders have compassion for others and which you don't. If you find people are blaming others for the problems around them, it's not taking a first step in compassion. So to try your best, manage your emotions, so that the first step you can give to others is a compassionate one. If you find it difficult to manage your emotions, take a break, take a time out, uh, go for a walk, have a sleep, have a proper meal, get rested, exercise, uh, and then come back to work because the working world needs you at your best, especially in this crisis. A second thing that we need to do is to look after what I'm calling the lost generation, the COVID generation. Young people who are graduating now or have graduated in the last year and are hitting the job market now are, are uh, going to face and are facing some of the most difficult situations of any uh, cohort to hit the labor force ever. 
And it may, in fact, not be any better for the next couple of years. So three years from now, there'll be two more years of graduates behind them, even more eager and more fresh to learn and, and, and take up jobs. So we need to engage these people now. We need to create jobs for them. We need to uh, create special work programs, uh, COVID-19 uh, projects that are gonna put them to work and rebuild our societies for the post-pandemic world that we all want. Which is really my third point. We need to plan now for the post-pandemic world that will be uh, coming to fruition hopefully in the next two years. After they found a vaccine and start all the antibody testing, we're gonna slowly get back to work. The economy is slowly gonna raise again. And then we're gonna to have to figure out how to live together better. It's almost like mother nature sent us to our rooms for misbehavior. So we need to take this time to think, you know, how is it, how do we wanna live? How do we want to treat each other? How do we wanna treat neighbors, other nations, uh, ASEAN, it's so important because bombing each other and spending our uh, national GDP on hypersonic missiles is not the way forward, not going to work. I have a vision of uh, young people 30 years from now asking me, Peter, what was it like before the pandemic? You know, we will have lived our lives and when we're old, they're only going to remember this period. It's like asking people about the First or Second World War. They only want to know about the war. They don't recognize that you had a whole life before and after the war. And it'll be the same with us with the pandemic. So what was life like before and how did it change after? And, and uh, the way I'm coining that now is that before the pandemic, the whole world was really focused on me. You know, how can I accumulate things? How can I get the best salary? How can I build my career? How can I do it for me, me, me? And that was true at a personal level, a family level, a community level, a national level. You know, make America great again is all about me, 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 me. It's my country, not your country. And I think what the pandemic uh, crisis has done or will do for all of us is to make us change from this attitude of me to the attitude of we. What, what can we do? to help each other? How can we make the world better for everyone? How can we protect the environment? How can we make things sustainable? How can we realize everyone's potential while realizing our own? These are the things that inspire me. This is what gets me uh, up to work and my routine on a daily basis. And I hope uh, it's of value to you. So in summary, this uh, pandemic has had a big effect on me. I'm sitting alone in my studio recording messages for all of you out there who I miss dearly, and I hope we can get together again uh, soon enough. The big lessons, we're all in this together. We're a global village. If someone's sick somewhere, everyone's sick everywhere. We need you as real leaders to stand tall, look at the horizon, and keep an eye on your values and where we're headed because most people don't have your education or your stature and they look to you for leadership. And as everybody wears down physically, mentally, and spiritually, be compassionate. They need your helping hand. They need to see that even as a leader, you're human and you can help them. Manage your stress because we're all gonna have these ups and downs and they need you and we need you at your best. So disappear for a while. Doctors do it, we all do it. Just disappear and then come back. And when you come back, you'll be better and we'll work with you. Look after the lost generation, this COVID generation, this, this year, next year, the year after. Young people who are graduating in the marketplace with very little hope. We need to create uh, programs for them. And get planning for the post-pandemic world. The, the world where we stop thinking about me and start thinking about we. Stay safe, stay home, and look after each other. And send me your questions. I look forward to the dialogue. Take care. Bye.